Safely making his way through the moose fire, Chad passed through the small town of Salmon, Idaho, before pitching his tent in the middle of nowhere with a group of hotshots and fire refugees. Departing early the next morning, he was treated to some incredible riding and scenery through Lewis and Clark territory. The warmer temperatures and desert hues were a welcome reprieve as Chad continued south on the impressive Highway 93 along the banks of the Salmon River. Winding through Grandview Canyon, he caught his last glimpse of the salmon as he descended into the farmlands of southern Idaho, inching his way closer toward Highway 15 and the Utah state line. Back in the Beehive State and desperate to get off the interstate, he circled around the backside of the Wasatch Range for a quick detour to Park City. After a quick ride through town, and a stop at the local watering hole. He descended Provo Canyon, past Deer Creek Reservoir, on his way to visit Big F at his new digs. Okay, Big F is ready to supervise the changing of the brake pads. Looks like the uh, backing plate just launched right out. Busted out of the caliper. So hopefully it didn't do any damage to the caliper. I mean, the rotor's not in great shape, but I guess we'll see when I get it pulled apart. Well, still plenty of meat on the inner pad. The outer pad looks like it might have been ready to be replaced a couple thousand miles ago. After a couple days with Big F, he bid his father a tearful farewell and continued his journey back to California. <laughs> Avoiding the interstate, he jumped on the remote highways 6 and 50 across the sparsely populated desert of eastern Utah doing his best to support local search and rescue whenever the opportunity arose. Crossing into Nevada and taking advantage of the odd dirt track, he stopped at Roberto's in Eli for lunch. South on Highway 6, over the Egan Range, the skies began to darken. The asphalt smelled of fresh rain, and Chad kept a watchful eye on distant thunderstorms. In this land of flash floods, one can never be too careful. Then, somewhere along the line, Chad parked under a tree, rolled through Tonopah, and hit the California state line. He ran out of space on his SD cards, so you'll just have to take our word for it. So after over five weeks and 12,000 miles, I finally sucked every last drop of memory out of my SD cards, but I have, uh, I just summited Montgomery Pass through the White Mountains, leaving the state of Nevada back in my home state of California. Uh, thank you, beautiful state of Nevada. 
and uh, my home state of California. It is very, very good to be home. And uh, thank you, Honda, for building an excellent bike. Yeah, I'm feeling good. A little road weary, but I'm feeling good. After pizza and Bishop, Chad ascended the foothills of the Sierra Nevada to Sage Flat Campground for one very wet last night in the tent. Poured rain all night. <clears throat> Still raining right now. So I stashed all my stuff in the bear box while I go to the very unenviable task of putting my very wet tent away in the rain. Beautiful campsite right next to the river. A wet one though. After a soggy start to the morning, the skies began to clear over the Mojave. Continuing south on the 395 and detouring through Phelan to have pizza with friends, Chad hit Wrightwood for one final hurrah to the Angeles Crest Highway before descending the San Gabriel Mountains into the City of Angels. Okay, so here's what the Shinko E705 looks like after 7,100 miles. Uh, the rear is pretty much done. I don't know if you can see this here. Front's in much, much better shape, even in the center line. Sorry for the poor shadows, but uh, the front's doing much, much better. All right, so after uh, 38 days, 12,451 miles, I'm back here in El Segundo. I'm here at the brewery celebrating. Uh, let's see, I racked up two sets of tires. I destroyed one chain. I went through one set of brake pads. Uh, I lost my fuel gauge somewhere outside of Fairbanks. Uh, what else? And if I round up to 12,500 miles, averaging about 50 miles a gallon, that's about 250 gallons of gas. So overall, not bad. I'm a happy boy. Cheers.